Neetam, today you will be the active yeah, participant. I am from I am from Sonipat. It's in Haryana. Oh God, yeah. Sonipat. Is it Jindal? Yeah, Sonipat. Jindal, yeah. are you working in Jindal? Uh, no, no, I'm not from Jindal University. It's very near to my place, but I'm from Gideon Girls College. That's wonder that uh, from Haryana there is one only participant. How come yeah. I have posted in LinkedIn? Do are you all not members in LinkedIn? Uh, uh, pardon? There is a social site LinkedIn. Okay, okay, no, no, I haven't heard about it. I think today. I have sent the message through to all the two eighty participants. Okay, Joyana. via LinkedIn. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I will join that. <laughs> but still, I felt that some people will not access LinkedIn, so I just okay. sent it again in a detailed form, the whole okay. message, the original message. But okay, if okay. you will get the LinkedIn okay. message, you will get to the account of mine, and okay. you should. Um, uh, Open your account okay. and then uh, connect to me. The okay. okay, sure, hmm. sure, ma'am. So uh, we are still waiting. I think Bharta might be also facing because yesterday there was cats and dogs torrents of rain in uh, Argentina. Uh, because my uh, law professor, he is also from that same place, and Bharta has entered in. She is here. Today we have got another one different name, uh, some Kanku Teli, Ga Ganeshwar from Tamil Nadu. Can you turn on your camera, Swavita Upadhyay? Please turn on your camera. I want to take a picture. So <laughs> the morale of our honorable today's evening speaker may remain high and very much with full optimum potentiality. <laughs> So, uh, technocentric learning English, we are going to uh, have uh, the pedagogy absolutely um, unconventional because mostly uh, the novels used to be taught to us with all that, you know, flow of emotional impulses and with all that background, backdrop, historical references. And then contemporary society, the professors used to have full of eloquency in uh, giving all that transmission of the knowledge of the British literature. But Bhartha has done an innovation and her intervention is that to uh, watch the film and by watching the film, she just uh, cut short some scenes some from somewhere and then she inserted some novels excerpts so that she can develop some exercises out of those excerpts. So you're watching a movie, then you're reading some excerpt, and then you are also, means there's a parallel uh, 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 togetherness she has developed in the literature and the film so that the li linguistic knowledge as well as uh, other sorts of knowledge with regard to vocabulary, imagery, comprehension, all that she has developed in that ebook. And how it is uh, so unconventional, how it is, uh, you may say, uh, a pioneer, uh, you may say a pioneer work, because in India still we are not uh, into this kind of uh, introduction of such book. Uh, uh, watching the movie and then developing the whole uh, book in a form of a, you know, structured, operative, functional language. So uh, I would like to in, uh, invite Navneet Kaur. Please, Navneet Kaur, introduce our honorable speaker. Thank you, Jeshri, ma'am, to give me an opportunity to introduce our speaker today. Uh, as it is said by Dickens, the worst of all listener is the man who does nothing but listen. So in this interactive session today, I'm honored to introduce Madam Bertha from Argentina, who has spared some of her precious time for, enli for enlightening us with her teachings. Madam has a degree in teacher of English for EGB third cycle and polymodel education granted by Instituto Superior Pio 12. 
Ma'am has taught English in various sectors like hospitality management, tourism, public relations, environmental health and safety. Ma'am has worked as a private tutor for more than 40 years, which is a great deal, ma'am. Ma'am has many more achievements to her credit. Whether I shall turn out to be the hero of my own life or whether that station will be held by anybody else, these pages must show. Ma'am has brought these lines of Charles Dickens in David Copperfield to life in her last two workshops by teaching us vocab, grammar and other reading and listening and writing skills. Ma'am has enabled us to decipher and understand most of the difficult text which requires a lot of knowledge and experience to gain insight into what Dickens wants to express and through her method of audio visual teaching that is teaching through the movie David Copperfield she has engraved it in our minds and ma'am being the author of ESL activity book and ebook learning English with movies and David Copperfield, she has basically introduced us to the olden era that we had forgotten. She has brought it into our life again and has created so much of interest in us that we would like to go through it as long as we can. Now I would like ma'am to continue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Navneet. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Welcome everybody. Um, well, we will continue with the book, and I wanted to say also that this kind of teaching is uh, an example of the CLIL strategy. Do you know that? Um, C-L-I-L. CLIL, Content Language Integrated Learning, because in a way you are studying um, Dickens literature, because you are reading his book, one of his books, or, or perhaps uh, phrases or quotations of the original book, and at the same time you are uh, learning English or practicing, practicing and learning new vocabulary. So I would like to share my screen with you. And uh, we, we saw the first, the second chapter of the movie, the second 10 minutes, and then uh, we are going to read the glossary <clears throat> for that section. Uh, who is going to volunteer reading? Who wants to volunteer reading? Today, there will be all new participants. Those who did not participate in the last week as, uh, sessions of Professor Bertha. So please, new ones like Sushma Minaria, uh, Sunita Bhardwaj, then uh, there are many, uh, Ganeshwar, are you there, all of you? Please yes, speak to me. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so Sushma is there, number one. What about the others? Deep Deepika? You know, perhaps, perhaps yes, ma'am. For the glossary, only one student is sufficient. Oh, oh. Okay, Sushma, will today Sushma will take the lead. Yes, okay. and uh, for example, when you encounter these letters here, which are in Spanish, I want you to provide the Hindi uh, version or the Hindi term or the Hindi word. Uh, well, no, let's um, read the first one. What's your name, um, student? Sushma Menaria, ma'am. Ah, well, it's very difficult for me to pronounce it. <laughs> you read um, all the eight pieces of vocabulary. And okay. I like the other people to take notes of all these um, pieces of vocabulary. Just the, for example, the word childbirth, income, to be in a, tr in a tremble, toddler, to flood, to suffice as good as, and plot. So write the list in your notes because we are going to work with that list uh, later on. Well, uh, you can uh, start. Okay. Childbirth, 
द एक्ट ऑफ गिविंग बर्थ टू अ चाइल्ड पार्टो एल्यूब्रीमिंटो बिफोर द एज ऑफ मॉडर्न मेडिसिन चाइल्ड बर्थ वॉज अ डेंजरस इवेंट फॉर बोथ द मदर एंड चाइल्ड Yes. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, for these words here in Spanish, you have to provide the Hindi word. Do you know the Hindi word? The word of childbirth. Just, just a second. Let me just intervene. I will tell them in Hindi what you want. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yo, yeah. Dekho. बर्टा जी का कहना है कि ये सब वर्ड्स वो स्पैनिश में लिखी है और जब स्पैनिश वाला पोर्शन पढ़ेगी तो इसका हिंदी अनुवाद करना है तुम्हें तो पहला वाला था जो वो इंग्लिश में खुद बता रही है कि चाइल्ड बर्थ में क्या क्या डिफिकल्टीज था तो इसका हिंदी होगा कि बच्चा पैदा करते वक्त क्या क्या डिफिकल्टी होता है क्या क्या परेशानी होती है प्रसव के समय में क्या क्या परेशानी होती है ठीक है ओके मैम समझ में आया यस मैम ओके ओके वेल यस दिस इज फॉर दोस ऑफ यू हु डोंट अंडरस्टैंड दिस इंग्लिश वर्ड्स and i want you to know it in your hindi language hmm? well the second one you can continue ma'am should i continue with number 2 yes yes please okay income payment for goods or for services or from rents or invests investments ma'am what is this renta or what Claro, this is Spanish. Okay. You have to provide the Hindi okay. word. Should I leave? Should I leave language. these words, ma'am? Uh, no, 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 no. Because perhaps you don't understand Spanish. Perhaps oh, yes, there are in the audience. Perhaps there are some people. Shubha, ma'am. Shubha. No, please, you say the Hindi Spanish. word of income. Income. Acha. Ah, yeah. uh, Hindi word. My God. <laughs> Let me see if I can manage. Uh, जय मैम प्लीज लेट शुभ्रा स्पीक इनकम मने जो हम काम करते हैं उसके बदले में जो हमें पैसा मिलता है ना वो है इनकम ठीक है सुषमा जी यस मैम हाँ तो उसको बोलते हैं इनकम आए कह सकते हैं मैम मैम आए 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 हाँ वेरी गुड आए बोलते हैं सेंसेशन Sunita, uh, where are you? Yes, yes, ma'am. Please turn on your camera. We are attending oh. class. Okay, okay, no, okay. No off. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, actually, the problem is about Wi-Fi. That's why. <laughs> Answer in Hindi. Ah, uh, to be in trouble. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's kampna. Kampna. Okay. Kampna. Okay. Yes, the following one, number four. Number four. Shushma, toddler, a person who acts or moves too slowly. Yes. I'll see. Yes, you have to provide the Hindi word and then read the sentence. No, the no, it's sentence. not Kamcho. It's not Kamcho. Toddler is yes. one who is too slow and moves slowly. Slowly, slowly, slowly. मैम जरूरी नहीं है द ओल्ड पीपल आर दे आर मींस यू मे से क्लम्जी और स्लो एंड ऑल दैट मैंने तो मैंने कहा कि बुजुर्ग व्यक्ति के लिए टॉडलर कहते हैं काम छोड़ नहीं है नहीं काम छोड़ नहीं इट्स आलसी कैन इट बी आलसी आलसी सवाल ही नहीं आलसी सवाल ही नहीं Alsi, 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 Alsi,
अरे टॉडलर के यहाँ लिए आप कह सकते हो चलने फिरने में दिक्कत वेल कंटिन्यू विद नंबर फाइव टू फ्लड टू ओवरवेल्म विद एन अबंडेंस ऑफ समथिंग यस and uh, whenever you see this in in parentheses for example this is regular verb in transitive when you have nc is noun countable okay uh, did you provide the word in in hindi to flood bahut bahut zyada like ho sakta hai baad bahut zyada baad नहीं बाढ़ तो वो है बट हियर इट मीन लाइक टूरिस्ट फ्लडेड इन टू टाउन दैट मीन बहुत सारे टूरिस्ट आए टाउन में नहीं रिवर that's why flooded because there are a lot of tourists coming in a in the town for example we have given Now, you hindi word umad umadana umad padna ha sahi hai umad yes excellent continue with number 6 to suffuse to cover spread through yes uh, uh, read the sample sentence and then provide the hindi word suffused bright sunlight suffused please remember there is no one to one exact translation but i will tell you that that there is yes. no one to one exact translation each language has its own peculiarities here the word suffuse means that it is filled with it the whole area was covered with tourists Okay, so think yes. of a word that is quite similar to the one that is in use. Tellna. Yes, you needed uh, more than one word to uh, give uh, the, the right uh, the Hindi version. Tellna. Well, can you read this sample sentence? Seventh sentence. Uh, sorry, <laughs> word. a uh, the sample uh, sentence this one bright bright sunlight suffused the room excellent yes uh, well continue with number 7 as good as virtually nearly yes should i read sentence also yes read the sentence i have worked all night on the picture and it's as good as finished Yes. लगभग लगभग हिंदी वर्षन ऑफ़ दिस वन लगभग हो सकता है लगभग लगभग यस लगभग यस यस लगभग इज़ राइट ओके ए नाउ नंबर एट प्लॉट कॉन्स्पिरेसी अ सीक्रेट प्लान टू अकंप्लिश सम पर्पस He is the victim of a plot. Very good. Shadyantra is the word. Shadyantra is the best word. Well, have you written the list of all these these eight words or terms? Bolo ko na bolo. Yes, because we now we are going to do the sentences. Uh, I need another uh, volunteer for example. Yeah. 
who can uh, make this one? The river mm -hmm, when the dam broke. What do you write here? The river, the river flood. flooded. Flooded. Yes. Flooded. 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 So you cross out flat because you have used it. Uh, now, the second. You speak English very well. You are mm -hmm, as good as. As good as. good as, excellent, an Englishman. Yes. Number three. When Hector lost his job, he was in a... In mm -hmm. a tremble. Excellent, in a tremble. My granddaughter is a... Mm -hmm, because he hasn't studied all yes. Daughter, yes. Daughter. Yes. Daughter. yes, he hasn't studied at all during the full school period. As a consequence, she will have to sit for pending exams and study everything in summer. This is true because my daughter <laughs> is, is a bit lazy. She doesn't like uh, to work and <laughs> doesn't like to study. And this is true. Well, number five. In times of the uh, May Revolution, Moreno Belgrano and many other patriots developed a plot, excellent, to overthrow the Spanish viceroyalty. You know that these are uh, patriots of my country, and the May Revolution was in my country. It was in 1810. Uh, we were. A new, a new nation, and uh, we were independent from Spain. That's why we speak Spanish, because we belonged in the past to the vice royalty of Rio de la Plata. And it was, uh, it belonged to Spain, to the Spanish crown. Well, number six, the business had a substantial mm -hmm, income. But, income, yes, but when they deducted their costs, their profit was not very impressive. Yes, number seven, in the last fumigation to control mosquitoes, the atmosphere was mm -hmm. suffused. Suffused. suffused, excellent, with insecticide. Yes, black mans are three and a half times more likely to die in mm -hmm. childbirth. Childbirth, excellent. Yes, you did it all very well. All very well. Now, we are going to um, continue discussing because this is a speaking activity and also it could be a written activity. So we have here 10 questions. So I, uh, I will read the questions and one volunteer is going to answer it. For example, in what circumstances was David born? I'm talking about time, weather, preparation for the childbirth, etc. Can you remember? Yes, ma'am. Can I answer more? Yes, yes. Uh, it was midnight and bad events happened throughout. And the weather was unpleasant. And all the preparations were approximately almost done for the childbirth. Yes. Uh, who came to assist uh, Clara? A doctor for, came. A doctor. And yes. when she was uh, she was having pains, first she was given a strong tea. Ah yes, yes. <laughs> to delay to delay the childbirth until the doctor arrives. Ah uh, yes, very good. Well, number two. Why is Mrs. See, Copperfield? Answer, but, uh, but uh, I just beg to be excused. The answer should also have been. Betsy Trotwood was also present there. The question is, who came to assist Clara? Yes, who came to assist Clara? So, yes. Betsy Trotwood was the one who offered her a cup of tea, telling Peggy, you bring her a cup of tea. So, the question is ambiguous because the doctor gave her, I mean, the doctor and Peggy. Peggy acted as 
midwife and the doctor delivered, but to assist her, Betsy Trotwood had come. Yes. Well, let's continue with number two. Why is Mrs. Copperfield's servant called the name of Peggotty? She is called uh, Peggotty because uh, her first name is also Clara and her mistress name is also Clara. That's why she's called by why. the second name of Peggotty. Peggotty. Exactly. Yes. In order not to confuse one with, with the other. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Number three. Why did Miss Betsy leave the house the night when David was born? She left the house because uh, she had expected a boy to be born, uh, a girl to be born, but a boy was born. So she was very irritated about it and angry. So she left the house. Excellent. Yes, very good. Yes. And number four. During his first nine years, was David a happy child? Why? Yes, David was a happy child. He yes. was with his mother. David was a happy child because he was with his mother and uh, Mr. Murdstone had yet not entered their life. Excellent. Yes, very good. And he had not been sent to school. <laughs> in school. Yes. Closed wall school. Yes, that's very important. He was at home with his mother. And he enjoyed every moment with his mother, and his mother was his first teacher. Mm. Yes, excellent. Well, number five. Whom did Clara remarry with? And Mr. what Mar happened to David during his mother's honeymoon? She she got married with Mr. Marston. Yes. And uh, he was sent with Peggy to her hometown, to where, uh, uh, where her brother lived. David was sent with Peggy to Yarmouth, Yarmouth, where her brother lived. Excellent. Yes. And as a short holiday, let's say, no, for him. Yes. What the, was David fond of Mr. Merston? Not no. at all. No, he not at all. He he had already sensed something wrong, uh, something sinister about him, and he did not want to leave his mother's side. But yes. he couldn't do anything. Excellent. What kind of house was Mr. Pegotti's house? And what were David's feelings about that house? His house was uh, a boat house. Excellent. Yes. And he was excited because uh, Pegotti had told that there would be a lot of fishermen and uh, uh, there would be sea fishes and a lot of things to do because there would also be a nearby market. Yes, excellent. Uh, number eight. Who is Mr. Barkis and what is he like? Mr. Barkis was the coachman. Coachman. Yes. He and tell me. Peggy. He loved Peggy. Yes. <laughs> And uh, what about his appearance, his uh, physical characteristics? He's a chubby man who was yes. interested to know about Peggy's life because maybe he, from whatever he heard her, he got uh, infatuated towards her. Okay. He's a chubby, aged man, jumpy, um, Always a kind of an intruding person in a women's affairs. Bilkuli nahi, bilkuli nahi, Jayashree. He was a very nee? sweet, lovable character. And he, he came to know that Peggy doesn't have any affairs with anyone. And therefore, Barkas is willing, which means Barkas is willing to marry her. And I, yes. I really like Barkas. <laughs> yes. And they, they play the role excellently in, in the movie. Yes. Uh, number nine. Who is Mr. Merston and what is he like? Uh, Mr. Marston um, is, was not serious uh, even for uh, uh, David's mother. And after her death, uh, he again committed to get married again. 
and he he also didn't like uh, david as he believed that children are troublemakers yes so he was he was greedy because he wanted money yeah he was after david's uh, david and his mother's money just so for the sake of money he got, he got married with that lady clara yes and tell me the physical characteristics his appearance he was a tall tall man tall slender uh, handsome oh huh. yes he was not handsome he was rough looking kind <laughs> no, i mean i think clara he was handsome <laughs> looking wicked <laughs> completely yes. a contrast to clara a cunning man a cunning man oh, why yes. yeah, he was very bad he was very bad and uh, more or less how old was he around 40 35 40 hmm. yes yes and clara was very young very she was young. more or less 15 16 years old very young yes and the last one who is ham and what is he like mm, do you remember who is ham ham was uh, the forget his brother a, a relative uh, of uh, pegoti Uh, nephew, nephew, I think nephew. Nephew, yes. Nephew. He is his nephew. Yes. And uh, can you remember his appearance? He was a jovial man. Yes. A young uh, and very uh, strong, like a sailor. Hmm? Very strong man, but very young. Perhaps in his twenties. He is in his twenties, perhaps. and uh, yeah in the uh, he concluded uh, means he da- he got uh, dad in saving people while there was a storm yes he was at the market at that moment when they they saw clara uh, arriving with mr barkis and david well this yes. is the um, the listening activity but we are going to skip it because uh, as there is so much to do we are going to spend all the time and you want to continue with the the plot of of the movie and the plot of the the novel you no know? but let's do this one uh, intended for um, students lower level students because they have only to choose a b or c well number 1 miss betsy asks pegotty to take clara a strong cup of cocoa mm. Tea. tea, yes, or coffee, yes, tea. Miss Betsy Trotwood wants the child to be a boy, a girl, or, girl. or twins, a girl. a girl, a girl, exactly. Yes, who will be the child's godmother? Miss Betsy, Betsy Trotwood. Yes, Betsy. Clara Copperfield or Peggotty. Miss Betsy Trotwood. Betsy. Yes. Uh, David was born at 8 a.m., 9 p.m., midnight. midnight, or midday. Midnight. 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 Excellent. Night. David was a sudden, lonely, happy and content, a weak and capricious boy before his happy, mother married. Happy and her content. Mother. Happy and content. Yes. In reality, in in fact, is content. No, oh, content. Content. Well, let's, we are going to look the the accent later. <laughs> David goes. For a fortnight to Yarmouth by her mother, a friend's honeymoon. honeymoon with Mr. Murphy. While yes. her mother at honeymoon, he was sent to Yarmouth. Yes. So um, version A is the correct one because she is not going to undergo a surgical operation. She is not going to stay at her house waiting for him. No, she's going to spend her honeymoon with Mr. Merston. Yes, and it was was at honeymoon. Yes, when Peggotty and David arrive at Yarmouth, the first acquaintance they see is Ham. Mr. Daniel Peggotty, Ham, yes, Ham, Ham. and Ham. Mrs. Gamage. Ham. Ham. Excellent. And let's do this one which is true or false. Yes. Uh, Mr. Pegotti's house is a houseboat. True or false? false. It true. is a boat house. False. False. It is a boat house. It's a, it's a boat house. 
okay. Yes. Um, but I think uh, because I I've already I made um, a footnote here to not confuse boat house with hat houseboat. Yes. Let's see you explained the day before yesterday. Yes. I don't, I, I don't know where, where it is. Perhaps it's uh, acá, here. Houseboat. Stationary boat or barge used, adapted as a home. And do not confuse with boathouse. So, boat has to be at the end. It's a houseboat. Well. Number two, Clara's honeymoon took a week long. Is false. False. How long did it take? 15 days, a fortnight. Yes, a fortnight. Yes, 15 days. Uh, Mr. Barkis is interested in Peggotty because she has never had a sweetheart. True. It's true. True. Yes, true. Ham is Peggotty's son. False. He's false. you. Yes, he is his, her nephew. Yes. After her wedding, Mrs. Copperfield becomes Mr. Barkis. Yes. True. No, no, false, false. No, he is uh, married to Murdstone. Yes. He becomes Mrs. Murdstone. Yes. He becomes Miss, Mrs. Murdstone. Yes. Uh, David was born in a hospital. False, false. Where was he born? At his, at his home. Yes. Excellent. Uh, David was very fond of his stepfather. <coughs> False. 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 David was born in a rookery. Well, and now here it is the grammar section. And the relevant grammar that appeared in, that, in this chapter is the structure have something or somebody done. You know that structure, I'm sure. But for the ones who doesn't know, we can read. And uh, when we finish this um, grammar point, we are going to see the following part of the movie. Mm -hmm. So this this is just one page, I think, right? and the exercises. So who is another volunteer that wants to read this part, the, the theoretical part of Gra this grammar point, which is have or get something or somebody done. Is there any other volunteer? Ma'am, could I do it? Yes. What's your name? Navneet. Ah, well. Navneet. Navneet. Yes. Navneet. Bueno, read, please. Uh, uh, Miss Betsy uses this structure when she refers to Peggy's name and says, and got themselves named Peggotty, meaning that the priest questioned any people who enter a church with the name of Peggotty. Yes. Mm -hmm. I sorry. Continue. If you have or get something done, you get somebody else to do something for you. It is the causative form of the verb to have and is a passive construction. For example, I'm going to have my hair cut. This means hairdresser is going to cut my hair. This is the active voice. Yes. He's having her house redecorated. Someone is redecorating her house. This is the active voice. In yes. informal English, we can replace have by get. For example, we are getting a new telephone system installed. A technician is installing a new telephone system for us. They will be getting the system repaired as quickly as they can. Someone will be repairing the system. The form of the structure is subject plus have or get plus noun plus past participle. The verb to have or get can be expressed in a variety of forms past, present, future, with modals, etc. For example, 
Jake had his groceries delivered two hours ago. Past tense. Dinah has had her printer cartridges refilled. Present perfect tense. Mr. Singer always has his suits made at the tailor's shop. Simple present tense. I usually get my hair done at Lugie's. Simple present tense. You should have your eyes checked. Modal verb plus have. You must get this pipe fixed as soon as possible. Modal verb plus get. Yes. Uh, yes, continue uh, reading this frame. In questions, the structure is as follows. Auxiliary verb plus subject plus form of verb have or get plus noun plus past participle. For example, will Hector have his shoes mended? Your suit is wrinkled. Are you getting it ironed? Does Luciano get his lessons taught by his private teacher? Have you had the new key made? In negative statements, the structure is as follows. Subject plus auxiliary verb plus not plus form of verb have or get plus noun plus past participle. Some examples of negative sentences are Melissa will be 15 next Saturday. She won't have her birthday party celebrated in a big party hall. This autumn, we are not getting our trees pruned. Yesterday, I didn't have my sheets changed. I think the chambermaid forgot to do it. Yes. So, um, was it clear for you just reading and understanding the structure of, of this, uh, this structure, grammar structure? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So, you have to think that it is a passive voice because you don't do the action. Somebody does it for you. Okay. And you, you use the verb have. And you say, I have my house painted. Okay. And other people uh, did it for me. Mm -hmm. So we are going to do the, the exercise. Let's see if you can. Okay. For example, you have to complete the sentences using the correct form of have something done and the words in brackets. Use contractions where possible. Okay. So... For example, we usually <laughs> get the bedrooms redecorated. Uh, can you repeat? We usually get the bedrooms redecorated every two years. Excellent. Yes. You have put the verb in this um, simple present because okay. of this time marker, which is every two years. It's a habit. Every two years, you usually, well, there is another. Uh, Marker here, time Let marker. me please give to others the chance also. Okay, sorry, ma'am. Yes. It's a recorded uh, session, so let others also participate. Deepa, well, uh, one by one. Please, all of you, just initiate yourself one by one. Yes, ma'am, sure. Hmm. Uh, well, sentence Sarah number two. Uh, isn't sentence. making her own wedding dress. She... She... Mm -hmm. Made it by a designer in Italy. Get it made by a designer in Italy. She got it made. Okay. By a designer in she, Italy. She is get. Let's put it in the present continuous. She is getting it She's made. Getting, huh. Made. Yes. You always have to to to, to uh, think about the structure. Okay. Subject. Verb. Have. Huh. The, the noun or it yes, or yes. something and the past participle. So the verb make has to be in the past participle made, as you said. Yes, and here is a question. So you have to be careful here. You ever anything from okay. oh. your house? You it's still question. anything from your house? Yes. You have ever still? Have you ever? The, Stolen anything from your house? Yes. yes in present perfect. So, have you ever been? Uh, have you ever had? Have you ever had anything stolen from your house? 
That's the correct version. Yes, very good. Number four, he didn't fix his car himself. He, mm -hmm, at the garage. He got, he got it fixed at the garage. Yes, he had it in the past. He had it fixed got it fixed. at the garage. Excellent. Now, your hair is too long. You need... <laughs> Get, you need to get it cut. You get it pruned. You need to have it, to have it cut. Yes, you need to have it cut. Yes. Excellent. Always is have something at the past participle. Yes. I'm going to do my food shopping online. I'm, I'm to my house. I'm delivered to deliver. Oh. I, I'm going to have the have food delivered. Deliver. I'm getting to deliver. Oh, I'm getting oh, to deliver the food. Yes, I'm getting the food delivered. Always, delivered. always get, is. Get, the verb get or delivered. have first anything which is the food and the past participle of the verb delivered. So I'm going to have uh, the food delivered to my house. I'm yes. Getting. I'm getting the food to get delivered. I'm oh, getting the food delivered. Yes. yes. I'm getting the food delivered to my house. Yes. If you can't see properly, you should get your eyes. Yes. Get test. your eyes. Wow. Test. You should test. get your eyes. Test. 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 test it. Yes. Excellent. And the last one. Uh, it's a question too. Are they going to paint the kitchen themselves? Or, or they getting to be painted? Or get or, Will or they get it painted? Or, or, uh, or are, are going, they are they getting or, to be painted? Are they getting or having it painted? Yes. Are they getting or having it painted? Yes. Excellent. Yes. So if you click here. You can have access to the answer key. For those that are studying alone without a teacher, you can check your answers. We can show answers here. Well, so let's go uh, to the movie because we have only 15 minutes left. So I'm going to show you. Can you see uh, my screen with the movie? Yes, 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 ma'am. Ah, yes, ma excellent. So we are going to put a play. So pay attention and watch. Copperfield. I'm Donald Fagerty. Glad to see you, sir. You'll find us rough, sir. You'll find us ready. This is a bit lovely, sir. Emily, say hi to you, to Mr. Copperfield. <laughs> well, sister. How are you, lad? All right, my love. <laughs> Come on, baby. <gasps> Mr. Peggy? Sir? Did you give your son the name of Ham because you live in the Noah's Ark? No, sir. His father gave him that name. But I thought you were his father. My brother Joe was his father. Dead, Mr. Peggy. Drowned. But this Lemley, she's your daughter, isn't she? No, sir. My brother-in-law, Tom, was her father. Not dead, Mr. Peggy. Drowned it. Have you any children, then? No, sir. I'm a bachelor door. A bachelor? Then, who's this? <laughs> I'm your head master, baby. <laughs> Mrs. Cummish. Her man and Donald was partners 
the pond. But old Damage died and kept her very poor. So Donald took her in. Like Ham and little Emily when they was orphaned. He must be a very good man, I should think. The best of men. Mm. To bed with you now. Good night. Davy? Yes, Peggy? My brother Daniel, he don't like have that goodness and generosity of his spoken of. Not by anybody, not in this hearing. I won't mention it. Don't. It makes him swear something terrible it do. Father, I never knowed him. That's like me. But you and your mother had you. We lost my mother too. Besides, your father was a gentleman and more an official. My uncle Donald. Peggy said I should never mention what a good man he is. Good. If I was ever to be a lady, I'd give him a sky blue coat, with diamond buttons, a red velvet waistcoat, a cop hat. A gold watch and a box of money. Would you like to be a lady, Emily? Yes, very much. <laughs> Emily, wait! <laughs> Approaching the very gate of the house, that at last she told me. Mr. Barkis, sound your horn! Please, sound your horn, then you'll come to the gates! How do you do? 
Clara? What is this? Clara, my love, have you forgotten? Firmness. I'm sorry, Edward. I meant to be very good. Go you below, my dear. Dave and I will be down in a moment. I have an obstinate horse or dog. What do you think I do? Hmm? I don't know. I beat him. I make him wince and smart. And I say to myself, I'll conquer that fellow if it cost him all the blood he has. I'll do it. A few days later, she came. Miss Jane Birdstein. Well, this is the end of part three. So, um, as there is only five minutes left, I'm going to ask you some questions. Uh, what do you think about this part? Uh, what can you tell me about uh, Clara, for example? Is she suffering a lot? Yes. Yes, she is suffering a lot. She tried her best to get settled and uh, to love her child also. But you see, uh, as we have observed throughout the clip, Mr. Marstone is very much harsh and uh, unloving for the little child. And now he is going to uh, threaten the child in a locked room by giving the uh, symbolism of a horse and dog like if the pet animal gets uh, very stubborn and uh, haughty how could he deal with uh, such animals so the same example he is trying to give as a simile to uh, innocent child it's a, it's a psychological torture to make yes. them be good yes you're right Yes. While on the other hand, the mother is also in a uh, fix. Deepa, I, I also get the feeling that Clara has probably begun to regret her marriage. I get this exactly, feeling. Exactly. Yes. Absolutely right, ma'am. 
and her face expressions are telling that uh, she is also feeling very scared and uh, remorse remorse repented for such a uh, re non reversal step ma'am i would like to add that she is feeling bound by her husband's wishes he has yes. to Quite obey what her husband says quite right navneet ma'am uh, helpless in yes. every situation he cannot take her own decisions she is helpless and she is uh, she has to obey whatever is being said to the point exactly yes in a way um the uh, deacons what is doing is uh, denouncing the treatment of women at that time that women have no voice and vote uh, uh, it seems that she must be uh, men i believe men, that uh, uh, it seems that she must be promised something else but the promises were not uh, yet completed or fulfilled like uh, the child is not looking uh, uh, being looked looked after properly by this new man i believe a woman can get married again if she is uh, promised to look after her and her her children yes the new uh, the new husband has to love uh, the childhood the, the child of the, the woman yes well uh, for example in this picture who is this man uh, this, this old man must be ham uh, no no because no uh, this man is older this the house boat okay it is a boat made into a house so Barkis. no it is not mr barkis mr barkis is the, the coachman you got it little emily yes this one is little emily the girl is little emily and is that james who is this man james james kiaver Ma'am, who is James? James Taylor. No, no, no. is the one that she runs away with. Okay. He is Mr. Pegotti. Mr. Pegotti. Pegotti, uh, uh, Pegotti's brother. Yeah, excellent. Yes, Pegotti's brother. Yes. Okay. He is Mr. Pegotti. Okay. Uh, his name is Daniel. Daniel Pegotti. Yes. And he took. Uh, little Emily as his uh, daughter, but he is not his daughter. He is his niece. His niece. His niece. And why uh, she took her in? Why uh, um, little Emily is living in this houseboat? Because her father has died. Father yes. has died. Yes. 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 Well, I think we've run out of time because now it's 11 uh, o'clock. So we don't have time to read. So next class, we are going to read the script. Ma'am, I we... wanted to ask one thing. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, Ma'am, in this uh, movie, when uh, she is, uh, Emily is asked about her father by David, uh, by David, she says, I never know you. I mean, I mean what? Uh, when David asks, uh, when David asks Emily about her father, yes, he says, "I never knowed him." Yes, I never known him. Knowed yes, him. Because... He said, "Knowed." Old English. You... Form is new. That's and old English. Knowed. Is that a correct form? <laughs> no, that's old English. Yes, perhaps it's the accent she has. She has uh, uh, an accent, a country accent, because they are not living in the city. They are far away from the city, and in, they live in small town. Uh, and she is, she is uneducated because she doesn't go to school, and she speaks uh, bad, badly, more or less, with, with mistakes, as uh, any child. Uh, speaks. Um, she, she said, 
I've never known him because he died, her father died, uh, the same uh, when he, her, her mother was pregnant. She okay. didn't know him. Thank you, yes. ma'am. You're welcome. Uh, before, I'd just like to invite uh, Deepa Rasogi to please read a report of previous um, sessions that were conducted by uh, Professor Baeta from Argentina. Uh, Deepa, could you read the report sure. that you... Uh, I would like to re re read the report for the previous sessions. Uh, <laughs> An English language studies workshop was organized by Bhopal Nobles University, Udaipur, Rajasthan, India, under the theme of creative language teaching, criticism, films and text from 12 February to 27 February 2022. From 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. in virtual mode, people from all over the world participated in the workshop. The Honorable Chair of the session was Professor Zoya Chakravarti, retired former head of the English Department, Dean of Humanities, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur, India. The workshop convener was Honorable Dr. Jayashree Singh, head of the English Department, Associate Professor of BNU, Udaipur, Rajasthan, India. On 12th of February, Professor Bala Subramaniam inaugurated the session by delivering an outstanding lecture on text and context, a relook at John Keats, selected odes. Professor Subramaniam stated about Keats' highly connotative diction and sensual imagery. Major themes of John Keats, an English romantic lyric poet, were passion, melancholy, life and death. On the next day, on 13th February, Professor Conan Creedon from Ireland spoke and revealed the secrets of the magic of creativity. Professor Creedon explored the um, explored that creativity, the creative that creativity and imagination are intervenes and offer us new opportunities. He asked to come up with new rules <coughs> to give birth to traditional ideas, creativity encourages self-expression, personal feelings, and experiences. As well, on the very next day, on 14th February, Professor Berta Otero from Argentina described and lectured on Dickens' literature brought to the cinema, David Copperfield. An Argentine blue stocking explained the microscopic observation of English movies and to understand their lyrical expressions. Professor Berta asserted Dickens was appreciated for inventing some modern cinematic key techniques by TV critics. The next day, that is 50, uh, 15th February, Professor P. Srivastava delivered a lecture on literature and cinema, pedagogical implications. She introduced the role of films in literature, education. No doubt, movies are a great resource for visual learners giving a glimpse of technical concepts. According to her, the process of cinematic thought is similar to a collection of images. Students do insight into the lives of different characters, just like a book. On 16th, 17th and 18th February, Professor Berta Otero from Argentina took three sessions day-wise on Dickens' literature brought to the cinema. David Copperfield, Madden taught grammar compositions, rhetorical devices, vocabulary, para reading, fill in the blanks in an excellent manner. She attended the students meticulously and her teaching style was very impressive. The next day on 19th February, Dr. Amritesh explained about on the perils pressures and paradoxes of academic writing. Dr. Amritesh suggested using the power of collective ideas for learning academic writing. He emphasized the importance of subjectivity and objectivity in making of thesis statements. Meta-analysis of the articles can make the practitioner learn academic writing. 
Dr. Amritesh told. The last day of the report was on 20th February. Professor M. Alan Govan lectured on the anatomy of creativity, a poetic approach. He discussed about the poetic approach of creativity for poetry writers. Imagery will be the password to unlock the device of poetry. He told meanwhile, there is method of madness in poetry. He exclaimed. He also asserted that generally creative writers are disturbed with their writings. Keats never allowed me to sleep. Alan Govan revealed. That's all in the report till yesterday, and we'll be continued. Clap for her. She's prepared very nice report. Thank and you. Attending. Only two she missed, perhaps, yeah. out of 10 days. But she has done a really great job. Uh, uh, so, uh, Navneet, believe... you are going to prepare next report from 21st February to 27th February, right? Uh, Ma'am, uh, ma I would like yes, to no, say no, that no. Uh, I, I was present all of the days. But, you know, I started receiving email from the third day. The thing was that I was present on the first day as well. I was present on the second day. But uh, I, I started receiving emails from the third day. From starting, I have I had the WhatsApp group. Throughout the WhatsApp group, I started from uh, started joining from 12th of February. Actually, administratively, I got so occupied. They um, changed my designation, my everything. Like, you know, my all mindset, like giving me some administrative post of the head of the department. So yeah. it was just a little bit, you know, totally in a chaos. Uh, Understood. And, I, Understood. and this workshop was totally controlled, completely controlled, self-controlled and self-managed. But Jayashree, you see, even though you are the head, we have been deprived of a party of your becoming a head. Okay. So you should next time... Tell me what party. To... No, How next time you have to invite us to Udaipur. To spend okay. some time in the luxury of your lovely university. And maybe then you can, you know, take us around. And Bertha can come and join us there. Don't so, you agree? Don't you absolutely, agree? Absolutely. Because to Professor Prem Shivasta have said that in April I am conducting a physical seminar in April month. So maybe April or the first week of May. And definitely Joya ma'am and if Bartha ma'am if you are free, we do uh, tell us about your planning to Udaipur. Uh, we will be inviting you definitely, but I think uh, you would come in the best season is October to December or February. Udaipur is always good. Don't worry, Jayashree. Jay I have done my PhD. For you, for you, it's always good. Are mera PhD kya hua hai Udaipur se? Kya baat kar rho tum? Huh? <laughs> and to the scholars, they will all be in, uh, treated in the department. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma agreed. He enjoyed as a citizen, uh, Udaipur, but as a tourist citizen, Udaipur. It's a lovely place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have a great day, Bhatta. Thank you very much. And thank you, participants, for joining. Have a great day ahead. Tomorrow, we look forward again to this lecture of Bhatta. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, we will be together on Wednesday. <laughs> because yeah. tomorrow, I'm busy. Actually, yeah, tomorrow, yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I just not notify to all of you. Tomorrow is Dr. Sanjay Kumar. He used to work at Lakshmi Path, um, JK Lakshmi Path University of, um, uh, I think, of which place of Jaipur only. And he's quite an expert in uh, language, soft skills, and uh, speaking skills. He would be delivering his lecture tomorrow. Uh, then, day after, uh, Bhartha will again continue her uh, three days. And then Amritesh would be there. And the last is of I mean, Professor Amin Babudi from Texas, USA. Today only he asked me to send him the Google Meet link. I said that it is same. I most have not changed the Google Meet link so that no confusion may prevail among the viewers. Okay. Well, okay. may I ask how many people from outside 
is there attending the the workshop? Ma'am, around thirty. Ah, thirty. Yes, mm. and from in, from India, fifteen more or less. Uh, but mine is is showing sixteen plus eight. Ah, well, well. Thank you very much. We'll see you on Wednesday. Bye. 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 Good night. Bye. 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 Thank you, ma'am. See you all of you. Good night. Take Thank care. Good night. Good night. Love you all. Namaskar. <laughs> Namaskar.